Hi everyone, here's the Bookamist once again and today I'm reviewing Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. This is a book that apparently everybody loves, I have mixed feelings about it, but first allow me a personal rant to all the writers watching this video, the whole thing about the end notes has to end. It was okay in Infinite just because back then it was original and sort of never heard of, and notes, footnotes, all that, beside, of course, Pale Fire, and also because Infinite Jest is fragmented enough in itself, so the end notes don't change the book that much. It was okay in the brief wondrous life of Oscar Wilde, because this book is awesome. It was okay in Barney's version, because Rickler has a reason for putting all those footnotes, but it has to stop. The whole thing of putting bits of the book and of the story in end notes and footnotes only shows that you are not a good enough writer to put these bits in the story in the book itself. Here too, as in Rickler, Clark had some reason, let's say, for using some of the footnotes, but some of them, with bits with secondary stories, with subplots, really had no reason to exist and were kind of expendable. That said, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Nora, what is this book? This book, the first definition that comes to my mind, is kind of an Harry Potter for adults, set in the early 19th century, had it been written in the early 19th century. And I completely understand, because here on booktube lots of people seem to be obsessed with both Harry Potter and British classics from the 19th century, this might be your next favorite book. I, I think it might be, but me, personally, uh, those are not exactly the things that like, they're not my bread and butter, not, I, I mean, I adore Harry Potter, I love British classics, but they're not exactly what tickles me pink. I hope I really know what tickling pink means. So why did I read it? I mainly read it because it was listed among other books like Michael Chabon's The Yiddish Policeman Union, awesome masterpiece, like Leo Grossman's uh, The Magicians, among books that are literary books with literary style and involved topics and brilliant writing style that also deal these books with genre issues that also deal with plots and with interesting characters and with all those things that make books entertaining. Is this book in the right place in such a list? I'm not sure about it, not even now, but I can tell you that it doesn't read like Michael Chabon, it doesn't read like Leif Pem's genre novels, nor like Colson Whitehead's genre novels, it doesn't read like Margaret Atwood's genre novels. It's something different, mainly because, as I told you, it's kind of a of like pastiche uh, imitation of a 19th century classic and all those books are extremely contemporary. Don't get me wrong though because this book even though it's written in such a 19th century style plays with that style with the boundaries allowed in such a landscape and talks about issues like racism, like imperialism, like homosexuality in a way that's uh, rather clever and in a way that of course you wouldn't find in an actual book from that era. It's very well written, it provides some great food for thought, some very interesting reflections on the English people, on the nature of Englishmen. At the same time, the main point about this thing is that, as I said at the beginning, everybody seemed to be obsessed with it. Neil Gaiman is obsessed with it, Julian Fellows considered it some kind of drug, and I have the utmost respect for whatever Julian Fellow says, because I think Downton Abbey is possibly the best show on TV. But was I that mind blown? Not really. And that's weird, really, because everybody else is. The one thing about this book is that though it's not boring in any part, it's incredibly slow and it's incredibly fast fragmented as far as the episodes are concerned, there are many characters and you follow the lives of all these characters, but everything you read doesn't really feel especially important to the general picture. All the episodes you read are interesting in itself, but eventually, all things considered, I'm kinda sure this book could have easily been cut down like to half its length and it will have preserved its meaning and all its qualities, really. And to me, usually, writing a 1000-page book when there is no need for one is sort of something that should get you capital punishment, but not here, not really, because as I said, it kind of flows, it's sort of interesting, you rather get interested in the lives of all these people, of these magicians who are out to rediscover and revive English magic. I did get hooked, I did get addicted to the book, but by page, I think, 750, 
50. And by then I had invested so much in the book, it was only natural to be so. So I think my last word about Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell might be something like, well, yeah, it's all right, it's, it's fine, it's a good book. Is it a good enough book to invest all the time? You will need to read this, this huge thing, because my edition is small, but the book is rather long, trust me. It depends if you're interested in the premises, and I've already talked about them. If you are, I'm sure lots of people are gonna be. Do read it, please. I'm not that much into the fantasy genre, usually. I love fantasy, but just not in literature for some reason or, or another. So maybe I'm not the best judge for this book. Also one thing worth saying is that in part at least this book is an historical novel, in part is an alternative history story, but the historical figures in here are very well depicted, are very interestingly uh, portrayed. You have for instance the Duke of Wellington and also Napoleon and also um, Lord Byron, he's a very interesting figure, very hilarious. So yeah, the book is a winner on that front. That said, well, if you have read it, let me know if you were as mind-blown, as addicted as everybody apparently is, or if you were rather lukewarm in your reaction, just like me. Um, John and Stranger, Mr. Norrell, here's the book chemist. Thanks you, thanks you once again for watching. Guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.